This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to help you build your portfolio and online presence and run your business smoothly. Use the link in the description below for 10% off of your first website or domain. What's up? This is John from John Branch for Photography, and now is the video you all have been asking for for the longest, longest time, but editing your photos on the iPad Pro only. If you're familiar with the channel, you already know I love using my iPad Pro for many different tasks when I'm away from my main rig. This involves content creation and editing my wedding photos while I'm out and about traveling in different states doing weddings. I previously showed you all how to do this with syncing photos from your Lightroom Classic main rig to your iPad Pro, which you can check that up right out above. But let's go ahead and talk about just using the iPad Pro only. And I know some of you are thinking, why don't you just use a laptop you can use Lightroom Classic that way. You have everything you need. Why are we trying to use iPads? Basically, it comes down to a couple of things. All the apps on the iPad are optimized for the iPad. And because of that, they run very fast. It seems like iPads can't keep up with laptops, but honestly, in my opinion, that's not true at all. With app optimization, you have blazing speeds in all the apps and Lightroom CC on the iPad is absolutely amazing. Also, everyone thinks that Lightroom CC can't do as much as Classic, but that is not true. There's only a couple of features missing, and for the most part, you're gonna get everything that you need out of Lightroom CC on your iPad Pro. From importing, editing, and exporting, you have most all the control that you need. Now, as a full professional wedding photographer, I can't get everything I need out of Lightroom CC on the iPad, but I wanna show you all how to use it. So if you're doing work for different cases, like just shooting models or doing something for Instagram or just something for fun, you all can use that and it should work out just fine. And again, outside of just using a laptop, the reason I love this setup is because I have my main rig at home and my iPad with me. So if something happens to my iPad, I don't lose all my work and everything right then and there, my whole editing setup and everything's gone. That's what happens when you have a laptop and I just, I can't afford that. So I have a desktop at home with all my stuff safely backed up and syncing to my iPad. And then I have my iPad on me so when I'm away, and then if something happens to my iPad, there's nothing to worry about, so we're all good to go. So before we start out, let's talk about all the gear that we're gonna be using today. Obviously we have the iPad Pro. I'm running on the iPad Pro 2018, but 2018, 2020, both of them are great. They're both fast, they're awesome. I have a 256 gig one, but if you wanna get a bigger one or a smaller one, you should be fine. I'm gonna show you some ways where you don't have to import absolutely everything on the iPad at one time. I also have the Magic Keyboard, which is hands down one of the best accessories you can get for your iPad. It is highly recommended, and who knows what the future of the iPad's gonna be once we start seeing iOS 14. With the trackpad support, it's gonna be super awesome, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of things you can do with your iPad, basically turning it into a laptop. We have our good old Apple Pencil. I absolutely love this thing. It is absolutely amazing. I don't actually use it that often, but I do use it for any brush adjustments that I do in Lightroom. And last but not least, probably the most important piece is the Narbox. So the reason the Narbox is so important is it's like an off-board computer that works with your iPad. It's not just a hard drive for you to download your content to. It helps you manage all the files that you're downloading. It helps you back up all of your stuff and you have a place to keep it aside from your iPad so it's safe and nothing happens to it. And also you can use it with Lightroom and download your photos from the Narbox to Lightroom on your iPad. So it's definitely recommended, especially if you're traveling like I do. I have a way to back up my stuff on the Narbox, know that it's there, know that it's safe, and then also bring it over to the iPad and edit it there. If you're not familiar with the Narbox at all, definitely make sure to check out my video on it right up above. I have a review video, I have an unboxing video, and check out the link in the description to pick up one for yourself. I know a lot of people think it's super pricey, but honestly, it is absolutely worth it, and I love mine. So let's go ahead and start out with importing. So with importing your photos, there's two different routes you can take. You can go directly into the iPad using your SD card reader, like the Narbox CF card reader, or just anything else on the market. This way, you're downloading your photos directly into Lightroom CC, into files, just that way. You don't have to go into photos anymore, which is absolutely awesome. Or you can take the second route, which is what I love to do, which is download everything to the Narbox. Now the reason I do this is because I have a backup, but then also I have a way to call my photos. 
So let's go ahead and look at that process. So to start out, I'm gonna take my NAR box and my SD card. Now remember, the NAR box has an SD card reader on it. So I can just pop that in there while I'm on the go. And I'm gonna back it up. Yet again, the NAR box is not just a hard drive, so I can actually make some folders of how I wanna back it up. I'm gonna put it inside of my wedding backups. And now our NAR box is backing up. Now that we're done backing up our SD card, we're gonna eject our SD card from our NAR box. This is all done and good to go. And now we're gonna call our photos on the iPad. Now the reason we wanna do this is because our iPads don't have as much space as we might have on a desktop or a laptop. Obviously you can get the one terabyte version, but if you have the 256 like me, and you wanna make sure you're not eating up all of your space, what you're gonna to wanna to do is call your photos first. So we're gonna do that in the Selects app. This is one of the apps that come along with the Narbox. So let's go ahead and jump into that. First off, I need to go into settings and change my Wi-Fi to the Narbox, which it looks like I'm already on there. And we can go to our Selects app. Once we're in here, we'll be able to see our Narbox and we can go find all the photos that we just loaded into the Narbox. I'm assuming it's this stuff here. Yep, there it is. So here are all of my raw files from this session. We're gonna select all and open a workspace. So what this is basically doing is creating a session of all the photos that I can go through and call them very quickly. I can save my calling information right onto the files or just export them into Apple files or iOS files so that I can import them into Lightroom and not have to import every single photo off of my SD card. If you're doing something like me with a large amount of photos, this is the only way to do it. You're not gonna wanna import 2000 photos and then have to call it through Lightroom itself. Usually I like to do it through the Select app. So here's our workspace. We can sort things in different ways by name, rating, file extension, so on and so forth. I'm just gonna go by name. The only downside to this app at the moment is it doesn't have any key commands and it doesn't have trackpad support just yet. But basically what I do is I come through and look at each photo and I'm gonna five star the ones that I wanna keep. And then I can click left and right to advance the photos and go to different photos. And we're just gonna keep going through until we find all the photos we want and I'm just gonna five star them. So when I call my images, there's a method I use that I like to call the yes method. Basically, I've seen a lot of photographers who go in and choose the photos that they wanna get rid of and due to this, it takes them forever to call their images. With the yes method, basically you're just choosing photos off of what you want. It is much easier for us to say yes to something than it is to say no. So if while you're going through your photos, you just concentrate on which ones you like and just immediately choose them, don't think too hard about it. Go through, five star the ones that you really like you'll be able to call much faster than going through and selecting the ones you want to get rid of. I highly, highly recommend this method as well because it's much less stressful. You can go a lot faster. And then in the end, if you need to call down further, you can do that once you start editing. Don't let culling your images become too large of a task. This should be something quick and easy so that you can go ahead and start editing your photos. Yet again, especially if you're like me or you want to be a wedding photographer, you need to learn how to call and edit as fast as possible because you want to go ahead and get these photos back to your clients. Now that I'm done calling my photos, we're going to save all of that metadata 
to the actual files themselves. So right to existing source files. That is all saved. And now let's sort by the rating. So here are a bunch of our five stars. Let's go ahead and just select all of those. And we're going to export them. Back onto the NAR box. Let's make a new folder. Call it cold images. So we're going to save our files there. Awesome. Now that we've gone ahead and called our images and exported them and separated them, let's go ahead and start jumping into Lightroom. So now that we're in Lightroom, let's go ahead and import from our NAR box. We're going to click the little photo plus. Go to From Files. And from here, we can browse our locations. Safekeep is going to be the NAR box. And I put my folder inside a NAR box called Images. And there they are. Let's select, select all, and open up. So you can see the number on the top left updating. All of our photos should be coming in now. The only downside with Lightroom is we don't have trackpad support, so I have to use my hands every now and then. It's kind of annoying. And now let's find our imported photos. Here they go. So there are all of our imported photos right here at the bottom. Now I can start editing them separately. So what I'm actually going to do, I think I'm going to turn on the segmentation and we'll just turn it to auto. So now I have everything kind of separated and I can just work on that stuff. So let's go ahead and start editing some photos. Since I'm a wedding photographer, I tend to work with presets mainly, but let's go ahead and just look at some of the sections of Lightroom. So you all, especially if you're used to Lightroom Classic, can get a little familiar with Lightroom CC. So I'm gonna hop into a photo. And then from here, here are all the sections where I can edit things. Again, remember, there's no trackpad support just yet, so I will be using my hands a bit and kind of clicking around a little differently. So light is going to be your exposure, contrast, highlights, all of that stuff. You have your tone curve right here. You see it shows up on the photo if you want to edit it. Colors, obviously, are your colors, your white balance, saturation, vibrance. If you need to get to the HSL section, that's that little color wheel here. You can see I can click on each different color. And for each color, I'll have hue, saturation, and luminance. Effects has stuff like texture, clarity, vignetting, dehazing. Details is where you do your sharpening. and then geometry for straightening up your photos. For the other areas right on the right side, you're gonna see where you can add your presets, you can crop, you can use your healing tool and all that stuff. So this photo is actually already edited. Let's go to this version that isn't. So again, I work mainly with presets. So we're gonna to go to our preset option here. Shout out to the Natural Fills preset pack. You can use it on your iPad Pro as well. So here it is for mine. And actually, I don't think this was the XD3, so let's, can't remember. We'll use that one. And now after I apply my preset, I start diving into making some edits. So my shadows, my exposure's looking pretty good, but I wanna turn it down a bit. The colors are a little off, so a lot of times I'll do auto white balance just to see where it wants to put it. And then from there, I'll make my edits. So it's a little too orange for me, but I do want it to be warm. 
So what I'm going to do is go into HSL, and we're going to go to orange. We're going to turn that saturation down a bit. So yet again, keep it where the warmth was. Just get rid of some of that orange. Pull back that tint a little bit as well. And yet again, like you can see, you can do full edits. A lot of people think for some reason that like Lightroom CC is less than, but it's really not. There's a couple of places where it's not as good, but for the most part, you can do everything you need to do. Let's warm this up a little bit. The tint is bothering me a little. And we'll keep it around there. That's feeling pretty good. Now, obviously, I could sit here forever messing around with the colors. So I don't want to spend too much time doing that. It's that early morning sunlight, so everything's very orange. So finding that good middle spot is very important. And one thing you see me doing here is I'm just clicking on the ends of the section. That moves stuff up by like, I think it's increments of five. And that's what I like to do. I don't like to grab the sliders. I've never been a big fan of that. We're gonna go down to our geometry, make sure this is straight. So I'm just gonna level. It didn't wanna change it, so that's fine. Then I'm gonna go to detail and look at my sharpening. Now, yet again, these are Fuji files. So I have found with sharpening is I can sharpen them pretty hard. I like to go around 100. I like my radius up around like 1.9-ish or so. Detail needs to come down to zero because that's what's filling in a lot of your worms. And also the masking needs to come way up to like 90 something. Because if not, it's going to be sharpening the worms as well. Noise reduction can come up. That will also help with the worming. And details can come up as well just to make sure it still looks sharp. And that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave that photo. Let me zoom in a bit, it looks great. So let's keep editing some more photos. So I'm gonna go back, but I could use left or right on the keyboard, and that's another great thing about Lightroom on the iPad is it does have key commands. So you can use this almost the same as on your computer. Or like you see these edits are totally different. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and copy this edit. So Command C, hit the check, go to this next photo and then Command V and paste it. So that's all stuff we can do. Same with here, I can go ahead and just paste the settings. And then from there, I can go ahead and start editing. Now, this photo looks so different when I paste it because this is the 23 versus the 56. And the color on those lenses are like totally different. But that right there is feeling pretty good to me. Let's just pull back the temp a bit. And while we're talking about pasting, let's look at bulk pasting as well, which I do have a video of that. Make sure to check it out up above. But what I can do is come back. And so let's just take those three photos, which are basically the same scene. And what I can do is we're going to go select. We're going to select all these photos right here. Basically about the same scene. And then I can hit paste. I'm just going to apply that to eight of those photos. And now we can bulk edit. And this is huge for someone who's doing bulk amount of photos, like a wedding photographer like myself. Being able to just take one section, edit one photo, and then paste it across your section speeds you up so much because now I can just go in and edit each of those photos and just double check to make sure that the photos look okay. So like obviously this doesn't work. So let's go ahead and work on this one. Pull that exposure up. Work on the white balance just a bit. A 
Yeah, and we can leave it about there. It's feeling good. Then we can go on to the next photo. And yet again, I had edited this before, but now it has the settings from the other one, so let's change it up a bit. So here's that photo, and then I can copy from this photo. Let's go back, and these last couple of photos look like they're with the same 23, so we're going to select them and paste. And then we can go in and check them, and they're looking good. This is actually the 56. So let's warm this up a bit. Let's hit just a couple more photos. Um, this one I'm a huge fan of. I'm going to black and white it. So again, let's go to our presets. Here goes my black and white preset. Throw that on there. We can go in and let's bring those shadows down. Exposure up a bit. Highlights down some more. There was a clicking drag for you all. Bring that exposure up. I can also, we have optics down here, so we can check our lens corrections too if you need to. Um, effects, let's make sure there's some grain on this. I like my black and white's grainy. Let's just turn up this grain. Some nice big, big green. And then let's look at our sharpening. Turn that masking back up. Get some noise reduction in there. And there we go. You can always press down and hold to see the before and after. So yeah, you really, you really can totally edit photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video a bit now and keep editing some photos and let's see how that looks. All right, now that I'm done editing the photos, let's go ahead and talk about exporting the photos. So I always get a whole bunch of questions about how to export your photos on the iPad Pro so that they look decent on different platforms like Instagram and Facebook. So let's go ahead and look at exporting in general and how we can get a good look out of our photos. So for exporting, I can select a bunch of photos or just one or two. Let's go ahead and just select a bunch of different photos. I'm just gonna select at random. So there's about four photos, and then we're gonna hit share. Now, with share, we can see the little options here on the side. So for each place that you're gonna to share to, you wanna edit the options first. So I'm gonna export two files. 
But first, let's edit it. I want JPEGs, largest available dimensions, image quality 100. And then more options. I don't need a watermark. Camera info is fine. File name is whatever. So screen output, I like to put on low. That just adds a little extra sharpening to your photos. And sRGB is good. And so now those settings are great and we can export two files. Oh, it can't export because it can't download the photos. I need to get off of the Narbox Wi-Fi and go back to my own. And now that should work out. And now it's going to ask me where I want to put my photos. So I'm just going to save them here to photos. We can save. And I think that was the export. That was fast. Basically, the longest part of it was the rendering, if you saw that. So now I can go into my files. We can try and see if we can find some photos. And yep, there they are. So here are all the finished photos. Looking good. And then from files, I'm able to email them to people, use them on social media platforms, or even upload them to my portfolio, which is a great place to talk about this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you build your online presence and website. I've been using them for almost seven years now, and they have been the center point of my whole business. Being able to show off my portfolio quick and easily to potential clients is a huge help and not only that, it looks great on the website, so it makes my photos look even better. On top of a nice professional space for me to show off my photos, I'm also able to sell products. So if you've had a chance to check out my preset or you've bought it yourself, you know that I'm able to do e-commerce right here on Squarespace and not have to log into another website and do that there. Having it all in one place is amazing. There's also built-in analytics, so I can see how many people are visiting the website, how many sales I'm making, and where my potential clients could be coming from and how I can optimize my website to book more clients. Make sure to use the link in the description below for 10% off of your website or domain. You can sign up for a free trial, try it out at first, set up a site, and then sign up and get that 10% off. If you're looking to run your own photography business, Squarespace is the way to go. Definitely check them out. Let's go ahead and look at that process one more time. So I'm gonna select a bunch of different photos, so three dots, select let's just go ahead and we're going to go all the way in there we're just going to select a whole bunch then we're going to share and then before we export whichever way we export you want to make sure you set up the settings now the settings will stay once you've set them up but just make sure you check this the first time before you export and then once I have the settings the way I like them, I can click how I want to export. So export to files, and it's going to render all of the photos. Keep in mind, you do need to be on the internet to be able to render the photos, because basically I'm using only smart previews in Lightroom. There's a setting that you can turn on in the settings to make that happen. Cool. So that is the whole process of editing on your iPad Pro. As you can see, it's extremely easy to be able to import all of your photos, edit them, call them with something like the Narbox, and then export them and use them wherever you need to. You can email them out, put them on your portfolio. You can even do that while you're on the iPad, which is another great thing about Squarespace. But I absolutely love being able to use this when I'm on the go. And yet again, if you have this connected with your Lightroom Classic, you're able to sync these photos back and forth. So you can import to the iPad, edit on here while you're away from your rig, sync it back to your main rig, and then do exporting there if you need more control over your DPI or anything of that sort. So I hope this was a helpful video for you all. If you have any questions about using the iPad Pro for editing, please let me know. I'm happy to help out. I may take a little bit of time to get to you all, but I answer all the questions, so leave them down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to check out Squarespace. I've been using them forever and absolutely love it. And I think you'll love it as well. It's definitely worth it if you're thinking about starting your own photography business. And don't forget, subscribe for more information on the iPad Pro, photography, editing, and anything of that sort. 
and I will catch you all next time. All right, peace.